Indian cinema celebrated its centenary last year, and the industry shows no signs of slowing down with age. The country is unrivaled in terms of its output, producing more than 1,000 films a year. Yet total revenues, which include domestic and overseas cinema tickets, as well as home video sales, have been meagre because of low ticket prices, piracy and a shortage of screens. But this is set to change. A growing middle class population and ambitious plans to build more multi-screen cinemas means that revenues are expected to increase nearly 40% from 2014 to 2017. And more foreign players are hoping to profit from the industry's growth. Billionaire Sir Richard Branson is the newest entrant to Bollywood. He's partnering with India-based Cinema Capital Fund to create Virgin Produced India, which will develop, produce and distribute films. His company joins the likes of Disney and Warner Brothers, who have been investing in Bollywood for the past decade by partnering with smaller Indian production houses. These deals have been mutually beneficial. Indian producers know local markets well and Hollywood studios are able to use their global network to distribute and market films, especially to diaspora audiences. In pursuit of more lucrative markets, these studios are now expanding beyond Hindi language Bollywood into regional cinema such as Tamil and Telugu films. These films, they're not looking to change the structure of the film. They're looking at having the fights, the emotional melodrama. They're just looking to reach a new audience. And this new audience is being reached in a, in a huge way. Disney, with, with Disney's UTV, uh, has you know, looked at all the film festivals. They've actually made a presence in the last three or four years in a very big way in the international markets. And now they've had a film like Chennai Express that made over 2.5 million pounds just in the UK tremendous amounts of money across the world. Um, for them, this is a traditional Bollywood film. It's got the six songs, it's got the six fights, it's got the biggest stars in Bollywood, Shah Rukh Khan and Deepika Padukone. They're not looking to change uh, the structure of it. They're just looking to go in there, capture this, this 1.2 billion people plus the diaspora. It's not just foreign companies who are tapping into Indian cinema's growth potential. A diverse range of countries, including New Zealand, the Czech Republic and Switzerland, are proffering themselves to the industry as locations for shooting or post-production work, hoping that this will drive up tourism and generate local jobs. For decades, London has captivated the imaginations of Indian filmmakers. It has become so popular that Film London, the capital's film and media agency, have even created a Bollywood movie map, pinpointing iconic locations like here in Trafalgar Square, which have featured in films. But with increasing competition from other locations, which offer tempting subsidies to Indian filmmakers, London is having to offer more to Bollywood than just iconic landmarks. While London Mayor Boris Johnson has promised tax breaks to the Indian film industry, others are hoping that the capital's reputation for visual effects and post-production excellence will prove a bigger draw. Centroid 3D, a motion capture studio, recently worked on Korchadian, India's first photorealistic 3D production at Pinewood Studios, just outside of London. The film has an A-list cast, including South India's most famous actor, Rajinikanth. This was the first time Centroid had worked on an Indian film. The production company uh, behind Kochadi and chose to come to the UK because we've got very experienced technicians here. Um, we have a lot of experience uh, with full performance pipelines um, for both games and films. And with this being such a big movie, they wanted to feel they had the support of the right technicians behind them. And whilst they had their own guys, Centroid could bring a lot more experience um, to this sort of production. Korja Dian is one of 2014's most hotly anticipated films and reflects the popularity of 3D technology in Indian cinema as well as the opportunities for collaboration with foreign production companies. Since working on Culture Dean, we've had um, a lot more interest from Indian production companies and we've actually partnered with uh, a PR company um, called Pixelcraft and we've created a company called Centroid India. So we are now taking our uh, motion capture pipelines um, into the south of India. As the Indian film industry goes globetrotting, actors stand to gain too with the rising demand for foreign faces in front of the camera. When I opened up my agency, um, I had most Asian people. <laughs> 
in the agency, actors, extras and dancers. And as time went on, um, there's a more of a requirement now for um, British non-Asian um, actors. It's now turned where I've got at least 70% are now Europeans on my books and 30% are Asian. And the reason being is because of the high demand now for Europeans uh, for the Bollywood films that are shot in UK. Actor Brendan Coleman has been using Nyla McGurl's agency to find roles in touring Bollywood productions. Since the success of uh, Slumdog Millionaire, uh, it has changed the whole concept completely of Bollywood. It's not just uh, for India or Asia, it's worldwide. Uh, I was in a, a TV series for ZTV uh, called Rabsi Sony Ishk. Um, and that alone has 20 million people worldwide who watch it. Collaborations with foreign players are transforming India's film industry, from often chaotic family-run production companies into slick global powerhouses. Whether the films will retain their characteristic energy and colour is unclear, but what's certain is that Indian cinema has secured its survival for the next century. Nalini Sivadarsan, Financial Times, London.